All right, folks, so for this video, what we're going to do is learn how to or demonstrate how to program repeaters into your Baofeng handheld ham radio from the keypad without using a program like Chirp or the computer programming software that uh, Baofeng ships with its radios. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is, is that I often get asked, you know, how do I program my Baofeng in the field? How do I program it on the fly? And uh, they're good questions. They're questions that I definitely had when I first started playing around with Baofengs. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, this is so cumbersome. It's the worst. I hate it. It's a pain. And it kind of is, but it's really not that bad once you do it a few times and then once you understand what you're actually doing. So it's like anything else. With education and exposure, it becomes a little bit easier. <clears throat> We're going to get started in a second, but what I wanted to say is a couple of words about repeaters. So repeaters typically will receive on one frequency and they will broadcast on another frequency. And this is determined by a shift or offset um, that is programmed in your radio so it knows how to communicate with the repeater. The other thing is, is that repeaters can use different tones. They can use a receive um, squelch tone or a transmit squelch tone. And what those squelch tones do is they kind of encode your message so that people who are listening on the same frequency or receiving on the same frequency won't hear that particular communication. It might sound complex, but it's not. It's really simple. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So in order to program your radio, the first thing is it needs to be on. And uh, when this came on, I don't know if you heard it, but it's in channel mode. So what we want to do is we want to go to frequency mode. And there we are. Uh, you want to make sure that your radio is on VFO A. So what that means is, is that you have two different frequencies that you can monitor. I switch between channel mode and frequency mode by clicking this orange button, VFO and MR. I can switch between my A and B VFOs or channels. I don't know if the right way to say it is by hitting this A and B button, but you want to be on A and you can see that by that chevron that's up at the top. Anyhow, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to follow these steps. So you might want to freeze this frame, do a screen cap, whatever you need to do. But it's really not that complicated. I have six steps here and in reality it's most likely five. And then I have an example of a repeater configuration that I got off of repeaterbook.com. If you're not using repeaterbook.com you're doing something wrong. You gotta go over there. It has all the repeaters. You can search for them by location, by zip code, um, how far they are away from you. You can look at different different states. You can look at them by uh, mode, whether it's an FM repeater or maybe a DMR repeater, something like that. Definitely go check it out and subscribe to their website so you can get an account. Okay, that said, we're going to pick up our radio. We are in frequency mode and we are on VFOA, which is where we're supposed to be. And, and according to our example, the uh, receive frequency from the repeater is 1, 4, 5, 2, 9, 0, and uh, this radio only takes uh, six characters. All right, so what we want to do is once we get on the receive frequencies, we want to hit the menu button, which is right here. So I hit the menu button, and I'm going to go to menu 11, and I'd get there by pushing the one button twice. And this has a receive squelch tone, and it's set to off. Because in our example, there is no receive squelch tone. It's pretty typical to not have that receive squelch tone. So I want to go into menu and go to menu option 13 which is going to be the squelch tone for this particular channel 94.8 so what I'm going to do is I gotta go back because I'm flapping my gums too long um, I hit menu and then I can go down and I can select different tones by pushing the up or down arrows in this particular case 94.8 is the one that I want to pick which happened to be on this radio because I was testing I hit menu again which confirms and I hit uh, exit and it takes me out of there. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my offset's correct. So because I said that repeaters can uh, trans or receive on tones other or frequencies other than what they what they broadcast on, you have to know if it's a positive shift or a negative shift. Again, it's really not that complicated. So I'm going to hit menu and then I'm going to pick um, option 25 which is already set to negative but I can hit menu and I can go down 
and I can turn it off. That's if a repeater is using a simplex mode where it sends and receives on the same one. Uh, in our example that I showed earlier, it's negative. So I'm going to hit uh, menu again, confirm it, and the exit. The, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to set my offset. So this is how far from the transmit versus the receive frequency the repeater operates on. In this case, we're doing a two meter, uh, what some people will call 145, 144 frequency um, repeater. So what we're going to do, and, and they're most always 0.6 megahertz. So we're going to hit menu. menu and we're going to go to option 26. And you can see here that the offset is set for um, 0.6 megahertz. Hit menu, I can go down there. I, I could set it for 0, 1, 5, 0, 0, in the event that it's a non-standard uh, repeater or something that doesn't conform to best practices. But in our case, in our case, it's going to be 0, 0, 6, 0, 0. Not a big deal. The last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I go and save this. So in order to save this frequency, the last thing I need to do is go menu, 27 and that's going to save take me to a memory channel I hit menu one more time and it takes me down to the actual channel number in this particular radio I know that channel number 39 is available so I'm going to hit 039 pretty simple right and once I hit this it's going to tell me that it's going to be receiving the memory that means that channel has been programmed Unfortunately, on these Baofangs, there's no way to put a custom channel name unless you're using programming software. So I can't call it as call sign or location or anything like that. I'm going to hit this orange button, VFO slash memory, mode. and that's going to take me right to that 39. And there we go. And if I push this, I'd be able to transmit on that particular frequency. Anyhow, that's it. Pretty simple. If you have questions, post them below. If you like this video, go ahead and uh, click the thumbs up or subscribe uh, or leave a comment. Uh, that way you can see more content of a similar nature. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it.